Today I'm going to share with you how to practice cello effectively. You will learn a strategy that you will make your own, and in the end, you may have a better idea of how to effectively use your time. Now it is an interactive video, which you're going to learn different concepts. I'll ask you to pause it so you can write things down. So get a pen and paper out, whatever you do, get your tablet, which I would prefer, and let's get right into learning how to practice cello. One thing you must understand about cello is that you are a combination of two very different personalities as a cellist. And I'm going to explain what each of these personalities mean. But first, we need to discuss two very important concepts. What is work and what is labor? Ask yourself the question, what is work? And write your answers down. And then ask yourself, what is labor? Brainstorm about these two concepts. Pause the video. Work is any task that is linear. It has a beginning and an ending, and we work for rewards. While labor is any task that is cyclical in the sense where it never stops. We always have to do it again and again and again, and we labor for love. So to summarize, work is any task that is linear and we work for rewards, while labor is any task that is cyclical and never ends, and we labor for love. So as cello players, let's ask ourselves the question concerning our cello practice, what is work and labor that directly relates to our experience at learning the instrument? Please pause the video and write down what you consider to be work-related tasks and labor-related tasks concerning your cello practice. Let's now categorize them into where they belong. Are they work tasks? Are they labor tasks? Or are they somewhere in between? Now you can use this list of 26 different ideas and use your own of course, but when you do this, don't think too much about it. For instance, let's speak about the concept of scales. Do you work or do you labor on scales? Once you learn a C major two octave, three octave, four octave scale, you learn to scale. So when you think about these concepts, there is a limit. You think, oh, yes, once you get there, you've learned it. And there's nothing else to learn. There's nothing else to go forward with concerning a C major scale. So that is definitely a work related task. Yet when it comes to another task, which we all have to think about all the time, which is tuning your cello. You tune your cello once today. Will you have to tune your cello tomorrow? Maybe even tune your cello during a performance? Yes, that is a task that is cyclical. It never ever ends. You will tune your cello again and again and again for the rest of time. When you think of these concepts, think, is there a limit? Is it a finite feeling? Oh, eventually that will end or is this something that will continue forever? Now, please take your time with these 26 different ideas and apply them to either a work or labor concept. And of course, including the ones you have written down. Please pause the video. As you see right here, some of the tasks are definitely work related. For instance, arpeggios, articulation, bow hold, discovery, dynamics, posture, rhythm, these are things that are work. Once you learn arpeggios, you learn the arpeggio. And then we go down to the labor. Labor are things like bow control. You never stop thinking about your bow control, your bow distribution, your bow management, or confidence, intonation. These are things that if you switch off for a moment in your head, you lose it. So these are things that you must always maintain. Left hand technique, posture, your preparation, musicality, your warm up. These are things that you do once and do again and again, and you always and you never stop doing them. But then you probably thought about, well, sometimes you learn something, but sometimes you may must maintain it too. And these are these five concepts we have listed in the middle. Bowing, fingerings, relaxing, shifting, and timing. For you can learn good timing, but then you have to learn how to maintain it fingerings. You can have a great fingerings, but then 
Over time, you may suffer injury or you may evolve and learn a new technique and thus your fingerings will change. These are concepts that are hybrid in the sense they are both work, you learn them once, but then they're labor in the sense where they change and must be maintained over time. Let's now look directly into what it means to practice our cello. This linear line right here represents time for everything begins and ends. And that is our one hour of cello practice. You have just received a brand new piece from your teacher or your orchestra. You want to learn it. You've downloaded it online. You've seen a cool video and you say, yes, I want to learn this. You have no idea what it is. You've never seen it before. So what do you do? What is the very first thing you do? Well, of course you prepare. We need to have everything sorted so we can concentrate on the task at hand, which is learning this new piece of music. That's tuning, that is preparing your cello, rosining your bow, things like that. After that, what is the next step? If you wrote discovery, you're absolutely correct. This is a brand new piece you have never seen before in your life. You've never heard it before in your life. And so what are you going to do? You're possibly going to go online and look for a recording to see how it sounds. You're going to look at the key signature. You're going to look at the articulation, dynamics, the speed, who composed it, what opus number. There are many different questions. These are all in the sense of discovery. And after you have enjoyed and fully discovered this piece enough, what do you do next? If you answered warm up, we're on the same page. Through your discovery, you're able to concentrate your warm up so it's much more effective in addressing the new piece that you have. So, playing a scale or arpeggio in the key signature to which the piece is written, playing an etude that is related somewhat to this piece would also be beneficial as well. So, after you have warmed up, you have discovered what you need to know about this new piece of music, then we get into the learning. And the first step is we learn what? We learn the fingering. Because the fingering is something that you can do very straightforward. Positions and shifting, those things can all be worked out as well during this whole stage of fingering. So work on your fingerings. And after you've worked on your fingerings, stage two is what? It's the rhythm. Rhythm is something that you can do by having just the fingerings, especially if it's much more complicated rhythm, both of these fingerings and rhythm, pizzicato. So you haven't even touched your bow. You've picked up your cello, you've plucked out the fingerings, you've now made sure that rhythm is as good as it can get at a slow tempo, then If you've guessed correctly, the bowing is the next step. You pick up your bow and you start to bow the piece. And you spend time learning the bowing after you fully discover the fingerings, after you have gotten the rhythm down, then you can concentrate on the bowing. Don't try to do the fingering bowing rhythm all at the same time. It's going to frustrate you. Fingering first, then rhythm, then bowing. Once you have understood the bowing and we have developed confidence, then we move on to the dynamics, crescendos, diminuendos, things of this nature. Then we start to add these musical elements into the piece for we have already learned the fingering, we have already learned the rhythm, we have already learned the bowing. So the dynamics is now going to start bringing this piece to life. So after fingerings, rhythm, bowing, and dynamics, what is stage five? The fifth stage is tempo. And as you notice right here, it is not on the same linear path as everything else because tempo does exist in a world of its own in the sense where tempo is always at a practice speed and then eventually evolves to a performance speed. And the reason why I place tempo in a completely different dimension 
than all of the others because it encompasses, it includes fingering, rhythm, bowing, and dynamics. As you are playing at a practice speed and learning to go to performance speed, you may have to look deeper and find fingerings, a bowing, or maybe an articulation that will work as the tempo reaches its performance speed. After we have well learned the fingering, rhythm, bowing, dynamics, and tempo to performance speed, what is the next step? We play the song in its entirety, from beginning to end. We play it at performance speed, and we play it for an audience. Maybe it's a friend, or your teacher, or maybe an audience of one, which means you record yourself and listen to your cello. You may discover many things. No, you will discover many things when you record yourself, particularly when you record yourself. So most of my students, if not all of them, know this concept. So playing in stage six would be the last stage for a lot of you. But I know that it's not just the last bit because there's just one other thing that exists. We have learned the fingering. We have learned the rhythm. We have learned the bowing, the dynamics. We have taken the tempo from practice to performance speed. We have played it through for our friends or family and received criticism and improved it. Are we done? No, for there's only one last step in this, and that is the undefined. What is stage seven of your practice? What is it? To understand what stage seven is, we need to start at the beginning. For all of us are a student, and when you are a student, what is your primary job? What do you do as a student? What are all students for all time expected to do. A student discovers. And so that discovery phase is something that you did at the beginning with your discovery. But then after that, what happens when you get into the fingerings, the rhythm, the bowing, dynamics, and tempo? What happens then? Are you discovering? No, you have now evolved to the next stage, which is a technician. And what does a technician do? A technician executes. When you are in your technician mode, you are taking the fingerings, plotting them in, working bowings, finding the best rhythm. You are taking each measure bit by bit, separating them out, working them, putting them back in. It's very technical. It's pedantic. It's, it could be even considered boring for some people, true, but you must enjoy this phase, the technical phase of getting all of the nuts and bolts and everything in line, in order. For if you have skipped over this phase, then you may not be able to go on to the next phase. And the next stage is you're the player. And what is a player of cello expected to do? If you answered perform, you're absolutely correct. A cello player is expected to perform. Remember, this is stage six in our practice strategy. If you have glossed over, lightly addressed the fingerings, the rhythm, bowing dynamics, and tempo, in other words, you haven't spent enough time as your technician executing these different tasks, then maybe it's too early to be the player and you're not ready to perform. Yet there's one more stage, that magic sort of X factor, the special sauce, the thing that grandma does with her tamales that make them so good. Stage seven, you become the musician. And what does a musician do? A musician makes. Why do you go to a live concert? Do you expect to sit and listen to a studio recording of an album that you own at home? No. We enjoy live music because it's the organic creation of something beautiful in front of us. If you enjoy live theater, live dance, live music, 
It is the act of enjoying something organically created by another human being in front of you. You are not only witnessing, but also part of the making of the music. And when a musician presents their music to you, they are making it with you. Now, a lot of you out there want to just jump forward and become that musician. They want to become just the in the moment sort of player that feels all the music, but you must be your student. And then you have to execute as the technician. You must perform it as a player. And after everything said and done, then you may be ready to then evolve to that last stage of being a musician.